things that don't like the like animals need to obey you in order to show you that they care it was weird it's it hmm. they they just don't know how to do it and for a game that is entirely based around shadowy organizations in cyberpunk land you would think that they would figure out a good hacking system and they just haven't that guy that guy just gave me like 50 extra hp with his spells so <laughs> uh, the guy well, the, the guy uh, the tier guy he just gave me like 30 gold you have to watch everything or else you we hate you but everything is bad except these two things but you can't just watch these two things or else we hate you But yeah, no, Doctor Who, both good and bad, but like mostly bad. Like, like, it's like I said, 70 percent. You know, I think Doctor Who has the same ratio of good to bad as the Star Wars expanded universe. No. 70 percent of it no. is garbage. 70 percent of it is garbage. 20 percent of it is is OK. Five percent of it is setting up for something really good. And five percent of it is paying off something really good. No. So here here's the big problem with Doctor Who for the good episodes to be good. You have to watch the bad episodes. Yes. Eh, no, not all of them. A, a lot of the bad episodes. A lot of you have them. to watch yes. some of them. Yeah, some of them I would agree. A lot of the bad episodes tie into the good moments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The second worst part of Doctor Who is an insufferable fan base that I literally cannot excuse because nah. they're they're really bad. I, I will accept that Doctor Who is just the same as the Star Wars Expanded Universe because both of them are things that like I look at and people are like, yo, this part's really good. I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to watch that part. Like, well, you can't watch that part. You can't you gotta you gotta watch, watch these all 30 the parts first. And by the way, these 30 parts are terrible. I'm like, okay, uh -huh. then this sucks. Uh -huh. And they're like, no, it's great. That's how I feel like, about, well, actually, that's how no, I feel about a lot of anime. I mean, kind of. <laughs> Well, not really. You don't really have to watch that much. I was going to say, we, we literally have just tried to set you up with the good stuff, but because you, it's really just not your but thing. But even the good stuff has a lot of episodes. Work. Like, okay, so I, a lot of TV shows that I've gone through, right? Even, mm -hmm. including animes are like, yeah, no, you just got to get through this amount of it before it gets good. Um, actually, Dan, before you get beaten live in the Discord, uh, the plural for anime is anime. Whatever. Uh, whatever. Just save me some damage there. <laughs> but, but fair. What like so I get that a lot with um like the one I get that a lot f or got that a lot for was like uh it's not anime but uh Steven Universe right Steven Universe in my opinion the first like two seasons are only okay at best they are just a lot of filler I have no interest in Steven Universe so you can go as, as hard as you want on this no I'm not yeah, going to because I, I don't know enough about it I don't think it's a bad show but I think the fan base can be a little much and I think that it what is it's it's um. It's it's a pacifist power fantasy like the TV show, which is fine, but not my not my scene. All I know about Steven Universe is um, the, all the Tumblr posts where people say that Pearl hates the Irish. Fair. Um, which obviously is I'm assuming not canon, but it's just really funny because Steven Universe, the, the, you know, the stands get all up at arms and the person is clearly just saying something. They're just stringing together a sentence of nonsense, but it is a very effective means of making people mad i suppose it's kind of funny uh, and that's the only exposure i've ever had to steven universe is like literally one post where someone said pearl hates the irish and someone got mad at them and i was like this is surreal that's my review of steven universe fair right. I'm, I'm now looking eight, up eight out of ten eight out of ten <laughs> eight out of ten <laughs> i'm now looking up like the best air quotes best doctor who episodes because this mm -hmm. is a life i've chosen to live and i would say of the top ten one two three like four of the top 10, you have to watch something else to get context for. And two of the top 10 are like a part one, part two. Yeah, that's stupid. Wow, that's that sucks. Wolf, Imagine your top 10 list being one fifth of the same episode functionally. Honestly, that no, I actually love that. I know the episode it is because I used to watch. I don't know if I've talked about it enough, but I yeah, I used to watch a lot of that too. It was one of the things my dad and I used to watch when I was growing up, mm -hmm. uh, even up like into my teens. Um, and the episodes in question are the two that are like, Part one, part two are uh, Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead. Okay. Which are... I do love Silent Library. <laughs> I do, you, do you actually know the episode or are you just saying it? No, the show, Silent Library. Oh, there it is. Have you never seen Silent Library before? It's so good. I've never seen Silent <laughs> Library, but I have seen it, the the library episode in Doctor Who, and yeah. I do like that one. It's, that, I don't know it's if it's really as good, good as Silent Library, though. That episode is, is very... Those two episodes are very good. Uh, Journey's End, which is... I'm pretty sure that's the... That's, that's old. That's like an old one. Yeah, that's like in season... Yeah, that's yeah, that's one way back then. Blink, which everyone, that's the one with the Weeping Angels. Everyone knows that episode. Uh, the one like the Day of the Doctor, which is the one that got the theatrical release. Well, you're telling me the Weeping Angels are only one episode? No, but their like introductory episode is like the highest rated Doctor Who episode of all time. Oh, why? Because it's a completely self-contained story and doesn't have the Doctor in it like at all. Yeah, that's yeah. probably why. Yeah, that's no, literally exactly, why. Yeah. 
Doctor I, uh, Who I found is it to be best. a very enjoyable story because yeah, it was it's actually like a little horror short, which is it fun. Is. It is. All the it no, not all the time, but almost every time the angels appear is like a nice little horror moment. Mm-hmm. And the more the doctor is in the angel episode, the worse it is. Here's the thing with Doctor Who. Doctor mm-hmm. Who is at its best when we the audience are put in the seat. Not of the doctor doing his crazy wild antics, but of his companion. His companion is the, is the mouthpiece because the doctor is supposed to know everything. That's his whole stick. Yeah. If you are on board with the doctor and already understand everything that's going on, you're bored because there's no threat. The threat is never the doctor. The whole point of him regenerating is that he can't die. Like it's boring. Whereas his companions can get right fucked up. Why does he even have a companion? Because he gets uh, bored because he's a god in the universe, essentially, yeah, and he has nothing he just, else like, to do. Put them it, at like immeasurable risk. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. But don't worry, they're definitely safe. He with feels him. real bad about it, though. He feels real bad about <gasps> to, it. To be fair, I've doing? always, I've always believed that, was that like, David Tennant's entire second arc was feeling bad and being yeah, angry. It, to be fair, and that it, was also like, and that was Matt Smith's entire arc, arc was feeling mm-hmm. bad. Matt Smith was a. Oh, I like. I liked actually all of those three. I feel like Eccleston got shafted. Eccleston got shafted. You guys shafted. are literally just like throwing w- words stupid. So right Chris, now. Chris that, Eccleston was valid. the first was the first Doctor of the new of the new series. Um, the new like the air quotes new series after the what eighties or something. Whenever the last one was, whatever. Something like that. Um, Chris Eccleston was great. He was very um, hard. If that makes sense, pun intended. Like, <laughs> nice. yeah, I know. Obviously, sex joke, but like, he was a very like. He wore a black leather jacket. He wore yeah. He wore a black leather jacket. <laughs> Like that was like He's he was a biker. He, he was a fucking war criminal is what he was. Oh, um, yeah, because that era of the doctor was what he occurred right after the time war question mm-hmm. mark literally like in the, he is. So do you, you didn't watch the? I can't believe this is what we're doing for an episode now. Welcome back to out the air. The doctor who uh, review podcast. I, no, I don't mind. I, I actually, I actually I love talking not, about this stuff. I have not seen the movie that you're about to reference that we learned that there's a secret doctor in the middle. Yeah, but I well, do know that, that there's a secret, a secret doctor. Secret it really doctor. wasn't that much of a secret. He was always nine. He was never eight. Um, we just didn't know. Yeah, who but eight then was. there's like. Yeah, but this I thought eight existed, but then there was the secret war doctor that no mm, one talked about. Secret war about. doctor is is eight. Huh. I'm pretty sure. No, I thought secret war because that because there were apparently only twelve doctor regenerations, and that was like everyone oh, right. was that like freaking nine. out. You're, you are you are absolutely correct. That is nine. I am an idiot. Yeah, secret mm-hmm. war doctor existed, and he wasn't numbered. He was just one of the secret doctors in the middle, and that's what made some of the hardcore fanboys freak out when they're like, what. Well, that means that as I mean, number 11, he left. already had all 12 generations, and now you're his... giving us a new 12th Doctor, but it's actually um his 13th generation, and mm-hmm. that's when I dropped Doctor Who real hard. Fair, because that is some dumb bullshit. I don't know if you're aware, but that it's all Not dumb bullshit. Not knowing anything about the original Doctor Who series, which I hear is quaint and almost unwatchable. <laughs> some of it. Um, I would actually, I remember some of the episodes from that too, and some of the episodes from that were, were solid. Um, like I said, almost unwatchable. <laughs> almost unwatchable. I got to met, I get to meet one of the, uh, one of the early Doctors. Really? That was cool. Yeah. Uh, that is Baker, neat. I believe it was. Tom Baker. Let me double check. Baker, I think, was my dad's favorite Doctor. Yeah, it was, it was also, it's, yeah, he's the one that had the scarf. Yeah, I got to meet him I was in, about to in, say, was he Scarf person. Doctor? Because I know my dad liked Scarf Doctor. Who was the other one that died? Uh, uh, Tom Baker and Tom Brady. Probably who played the doctors. Da, 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 da. Tom Brady is playing for Tampa Bay this year. Isn't that weird? That is a Colin weird. Baker. Also, the Super Bowl is in Tampa Bay no. this year, and like Brady and Gronkowski are both on Tampa Bay now, so it's not impossible that they go pretty far because they're like actual uh, division is pretty bad because mm-hmm. like, yeah, know. Tampa actually might do uh, well. Oh, hot damn! Yeah, I don't think I don't know, but like, so I the, it's a non-zero back, chance so they make it to the Super Bowl, and like. Ooh, do they have a contingency plan for if the team that's hosting the Super Bowl makes it to the Super Bowl? Because I don't know. Usually it's not very good teams. It's teams that are tanking. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know. It'd be kind of weird. That'd be interesting. Unlikely, though, because like the, the rest of the team isn't you know stellar. And they've still got to compete with, because they're still Eastern, they've still got to compete with like Kansas City. So unlikely, but not impossible. Of course, there's other really good teams in the East, too. Baltimore and all that. You can go back talking about Doctor Who now. No, you're fine. I was I was totally totally down to to break it off to something that wasn't some nerd shit. Thank God I hate Doctor Who so much. <laughs> Why? God, it's terrible. It's really not. It's, it's Most just of it Star is. Wars three. I was gonna say, do you after already saying you thought it was terrible? Do you really want to try and be like, oh, it's not that terrible? I I don't know, man. I I have this instinct to to like be like, well, there are parts that are okay, but no, like objectively, most That's, of it's I, trash. I I agree that there are parts that are okay. But like I said earlier, it's kind of like 
the Star Wars thing mm-hmm. where people are like, you have to watch everything or else you we hate you. But everything is bad except these two things. But you can't just watch these two things or else we hate you. Oh, and you're dude. Like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And I don't have access to this content because I'm not paying for Disney Plus. Are you kidding me? And then uh, they're like, well, I guess everyone is now your worst enemy and our content is terrible. Haha, <laughs> 70% of it's bad. But still, you can't be mean about it and tell me that most of it's bad, even though we just told you the vast majority of it's bad. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And you're like, no, huh. super fair. No, I just sent you a link. Did you see that episode? Uh, I'm about to find out. That's that's one of the Eccleston episodes. Oh, that's yeah. No, I saw I saw all of Eccleston, okay. all of Tennant, and most of Smith. Okay, because that episode is actually one of my favorite. It might actually be my favorite. Yeah, the kids in gas masks. The kids, was, the kids that like grow gas masks out of their face. Yeah, super spooky. No, uh, there's like when they really led into that, like into the weird stuff. I loved mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And when they leaned into, oh, it's the Daleks, aren't they? Aren't they funny? I liked they were that great too. The first time, and, and then, then the then second time, was, and then, then the seventh time, in, they were boring. Yeah, it's. I felt like it's kind of like Star Trek, right? With the board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can only how, use them like, so the many board times. Was so cool, and they should have used them more than they actually realistically did mm-hmm. in certain things. But like, they're like, oh, how can we? How can we make the Borg better? And then they give you a good guy Borg, and mm-hmm. it's like, there we go. There was a, and there was, uh, there was a fucking, which one was the one with, um, cause the, anytime the master showed up, that was a fucking trip too. He was always, I don't remember him. He was the one that, uh, he was the anti-doctor, the, right? Yeah. He's the anti-doctor. Yeah. Did you see the one with the, it was like one of the season finales. It might've been Tenant's season finale or series Bad finale. Wolf. Wasn't that his season finale? Yeah, Bad Wolf. When, when, um. Yeah, they had been teasing whatever Bad Wolf meant the yeah. entire time. Yeah, and it was a really lame fucking reveal. And the, and yeah, and the and the thing was like, oh, turns out Rose was Bad Wolf all along, or whatever the hell it was. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. The bye. real Bad Wolf was the friends we made along the way. Really though. Yeah, because really that was the one though. that had the that was the one that had the like weird. Uh, yeah, because when Tenet, uh, you get the you get the really sad ending with uh, Donna's granddad or whatever. It's yeah. all really sad and shit. Yeah, the the master was in that. That was fun. Anyway, yeah, Doctor Who is garbage, but there are some parts of it that are worth it, and I, I personally can't justify watching all of it to get through the bad to get to the good anymore. But I, a part of me wishes I could, because I do, I do have a ton of fondness for the episodes that were good. Mm-hmm. No, I get that. I don't know. That sounds about right. I watched it with, um, with uh, me and Jackson had a, a friend who used to host Call of Duty Zombie Nights. Oh, that's fun. Ah, yes. Uh, I watched through most of the new series with his dad. Aww. And then they took it off of Netflix. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we were, I don't know, we were a little over halfway through Matt Smith at that time. And, and you were like, thats I guess that's it for me. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, let's be real. There was nothing at that point. There was nothing worth watching left. No, um, the, um, the, did you, you got up through, um, the fucking, the pawns, right? Did, were the pawn, the, the fucking Amy Pond still around? Oh, yeah. Did you get to the end of her arc? Because that had the yes. weeping angels in it. Yeah. Where it turns out the Statue of Liberty is a weeping angel. No. Yeah. It's real dumb. Yes. It's real dumb. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And they're <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, we're back in the past when... now, but we're fine and happy. Don't worry about us. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, because uh, when is there ever anyone not watching uh, the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, you're not. You're not. You're not cool. You're not fun. Zero to ten. Yeah. Doctor Who's stupid. Doctor Who's really stupid. It has some fun things. It has some great lines. Um, I really enjoy some of the more some of the longer monologues that they do. I've noticed I'm, I've I've noticed over the last not super long that I uh, that I'm a huge fan of like well crafted monologues. Okay, and who isn't? Like you're who? doing early work by the master, right. Cameron Diaz. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't know how many will get that, but I know I know Emma. I know I know well, you got that. So I didn't got that, but game you know. recognized game. I didn't, work by the I, master. I didn't realize it was Cameron a, Diaz. I didn't realize it was a wider reference, and I was just oh. on board for this statement. That. I remember that now. Yeah, okay. Oh, what a classic bit. Oh, what a good bit. Um, anyway. Yes, uh, what do you... Uh, Henry Cavill's painting Warhammer miniatures in quarantine. I That's love, trending on Twitter. Cavill is... Cavill is a good boy. Ca- I think Cavill's kind of, like... His fucking... Um, his time doing interviews for The Witcher, I think, made everyone realize that, oh, look, Cavill's just a big, sexy fucking nerd. Yeah, I, I like him because he's, like... He is, like, the, the Chads. The mm-hmm. Chad that all nerds fear. Mm-hmm. And by fear, I mean, like... 
secretly want to be. Or, I don't even secretly want to be, but he's just like the idea of like one of those like you know crusty like neckbeard folks who like mm-hmm. gatekeep everything super hard. Seeing like Henry Cavill come in with minis and be like, "Oh, did you buy those on eBay? You'll never match my army." And Henry Cavill's like, "Actually, my uh, strength is seven, so I actually have a five up to hit." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, it's my and favorite. They're like, "No," and they just like disintegrate. It's just very good. It's, it's just very, it's like very when you good. See, like like the the classic of um like the metal dudes being like. I don't know why I can't find a girlfriend. And then as soon as they see a girl who likes metal, they just like immediately interrogate her. Yeah, Bill, what's oh, that like? You like Metallica? Name their three best albums. Well, actually, it's a not subjective. It's objective what their best three albums are. And if you currently can't really understand like the, the music theory behind it, then maybe we shouldn't even be here right now. You should just leave the show. That kind of guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like that. it's like the same as like whenever like an attractive girl is into metal and metal guys are like, no way. Henry Cavill's like that, but for nerds. Yeah, that's exactly what he is. And I love it. Mm-hmm. Strong agree. It's like when you, it's like when everyone found out that uh, I think it was Wayne The Rock Johnson played uh, D&D. Uh, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, that's I don't know if The Rock does, but I know Vin Diesel's like super into D&D. <gasps> Have you I ever do love that. read like some of the stuff he plays, though? Because it's very funny. He literally only plays like pacifist cleric, huge hulking barbarian fighter types, no. and I'm like Vin Diesel. No, I really was hoping you were gonna be like, yeah, no, I actually play, uh, I actually play nothing but wild magic sorcerers. Who could the have seen class. this? Go- the you, best class. Do you really think he's that interesting, though? No, I was you really know, I hoping. Just had a, I just had a moment where I realized we forgot to do wild magic rolls the entirety of the D and D. You don't have to. You don't have to do them. You just. It's just a. Uh, I mean, come on. Well, who's well, a wild magic I think sorcerer? There are, there are specific things about like if you do if you burn Gustavo. spell points and stuff, you have to oh, roll shoot, them and other stuff. Yeah, he's a wild magic. I miss I ice knives. Uh, here's my thing with wild he magic. He did ice think, knife a lot. <laughs> I think wild magic is best when it's used at the least opportune times, not for every roll. Personally. Well, I mean, you, you roll for it every time. It's like it's just a random. I'm not just going to be like, I have decided now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because you roll the, one D, the 1d20 and then if you get like a one or something, then you get a wild magic effect. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Man, I just feel like he casts like six or seven spells. Mm hmm. I should have been rolling. Rolling, I just roll rolling, rolling. To start the next session and just say it all that came at once. I, but, uh, yeah, by the I, way, you have some pretty terrible things that happen to you. Hope you're ready. <laughs> I love wild magic. It's so stupid, but I love it so much. It's so fun. I I, just, I love like the dynamic because it is also like the the Chad wild magic sorcerer versus the incel wizard. Go off because the wizard's like I've studied for sixty years and I can prepare oh. all these spells. And sorcerers are like, one day I woke up and now I am stronger than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have always been a fan of the idea of like you can multi-class into wizard after level one, but like like if you're a level one wizard, you've already been studying for like you know five, ten years in your chosen craft, right? But if you if you are a level one bard and then take one level in wizard, it's like, hey, by the way, I just figured it out one day. Don't worry about it. It's yeah. it's very silly. I feel like it's I feel like because uh, Jackson and I had talked about like multi-classing and um. I realized after we had a brief talk, I really didn't need to multi-class any of my characters. I just kind of like kind of wanted to. Yeah. Um, and thinking about it, I'm like, huh, I guess really none of my characters actually would function well as a multi-class character. I, cause I literally like, I wanted to multi-class as a, a rogue mm-hmm. so I could get some gun perks. Yeah. But then, but then you realize I that realize it, this, everyone's this, using this a gun. So who cares? Well, here's the thing. This isn't D and D 3.5. I'm not out that's here getting true. feats. That's like, oh yeah, you're a, uh, your crossbow. It's a repeating crossbow question mark. You know, like yeah. I already have a yeah. revolver. <laughs> yeah. I three, five. I, hmm, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, right? I love three, five because of how ridiculously in the weeds you can get with like, yeah, no, I have a feat that specifically grants me a bonus when I take specific actions, right? Like the entire shadow mm-hmm. dancer feet tree is like seven feet deep, but by the end of it, you can use, you can flank with yourself by just shadow, da- like shadow stepping like five steps, a five foot step around somebody mm-hmm. and turn into an anime character. But you have to go like seven feet deep to do that, which means that you are getting no other feats full stop. Whereas in 5e, it's like, hey, you don't even like necessarily need feats unless your GM is willing to allow you to have them. So I guess have fun, like take your plus one per level up and like get the fuck out of here or per, you know, every four levels and get the fuck out of here. Um, I think that I was talking about how I really liked that, although 5e is simpler in a lot of ways, the um, the subclasses for 5e really like so some classes in 5e are so diverse that you could theoretically have an entire party of just one class all different subclasses yeah, but should. just one class 
Mm-hmm. With and monks. I was going to say, in that one class should be uh, rootin' tootin' cowboy shooting, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and, and and you could. Obviously, you shouldn't because story, whatever, blah, blah, blah. No, but, you should because story. Just think about it. You could have like an entire a class of band clerics. Of, yeah, exactly. And I they could all be worshiping like, the same deity and they could all be working together. Is it funny? Actually, I think it no, works really well for story. Did, I think it would work even better if they were all worshiping different deities that just happen to have the same goals. Okay, that'd be fun. And then just like, it's it's kind of like a... It's kind of like, well, um, yeah. It's, it's like The Bachelor. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Over time, you just keep eliminating clerics well, until... You have, you have like five you have five clerics and a barbarian, and it's basically <laughs> like each cleric is trying to convert the barbarian to the religion throughout the campaign. I actually and love it's, that. It's, it's just The Bachelor. I would play that in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Big Ollie, you, did you see that holy smite I got off on the uh, ogre? Doesn't no, that man. prove to you that Lathander is indeed the superior deity? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but uh, that guy, that guy just gave me like fifty extra HP with his spells. So uh, <laughs> the guy, with, uh, the guy, uh, the tier guy, he just gave me like thirty gold. So I think I'm gonna go that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just about to say, where does it break down to just like financial bribery? Because let's be real. <laughs> Have like one chaotic evil rogue and then just like five lawful good clerics trying to convert the rogue. Mm-hmm. See that? That's the kind of game I can get behind. Isn't that isn't that just like a breakdown of uh what one of like one of those one shot games that we uh used to talk about doing, Dan? No. Sorry, what was that? I mean, how would I know? I totally <laughs> blanked for a second. I zoned out. Hey Jackson, isn't you... that like something Dan and I used to talk no, about? Oh, did I say Jackson? Oh, I meant to say hey, isn't <laughs> Well you didn't you didn't say but like I'm the one who brought it up and you said hey Dan. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, no, um yeah, how no, Dan. Isn't like the idea of like, you know, a rogue with a bunch of clerics converting him or a barbarian with a bunch of clerics converting him, isn't that basically like the subplot of one of your one offs? Like couldn't you make been. a one off about that? <laughs> I, I might have, honestly. If not, I we should. You know, I was talking the other day. I love D&D. Let's, not, let's get that out of the way, right? I enjoy D&D a lot. But I, I wish hate D&D. <laughs> I want... I can, will not, I don't think, play another uh, 3.5 or 5e game until I get at least one or two games where I'm playing in another system. Because I, I love D&D, but I just I really want to play around with some other systems, and I, I, I feel like not enough people are doing that. Hell, yeah, I feel like you probably have to DM it then. And that's the problem is that I I don't enjoy DMing. I hate DMing. I would love I w- when I was playing with um. <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me you're holding people hostage until they? No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. A, I'm not holding anyone hostage. I'm just not like because I get every every couple of weeks some or every month or two somebody is like, hey, I'm talking about starting a D and D game. You interested? And like, I just I think I'm gonna have to keep telling them no, not because like I'm not interested, just because like I'm in. Th- so right now I'm playing three concurrent two games in 5e and one game in 3.5 pathfinder mm. and i it's hard enough for me to keep those three running like i i'm happy with where they are right now i'm i'm there but they are taking up three full nights of my week i don't think i would be able to justify taking up a fourth night of my week if it was another D game whereas i think that if it was something else i could be like you know i really want to try this new this new experience this new system but the problem as a dm is no one wants to play anything but D, which is insane no one wants to play D in the first place it is so hard to get players and like that's the thing is i got to play you're like no it's not everyone wants to play and you're like okay and you try and get like three people and other ones like actually no and like, it is way harder to get players than you would think as a player because as a player you're like oh come on everyone's down mm-hmm. and everyone says they're down but, but everyone when, when it's, tries when to it's time out. yeah no one actually everyone likes the idea of it but no one actually wants to do it uh, and so if you say anything other than D 5e people are like you can get 3.5 on someone who's played 5e, but you can't get any new system. I tried to get my friends to play a game of, what is it, Knives in the Dark. Oh, Blades and, in the Dark. I f- and, yeah, Blades in the Dark. Jack and immediately everyone was like, yeah, I'm on board. And I was like, well, you have to learn it. And they're like, oh, I'm off. Just Jackson, play 5e. Listen to me. I own a copy. Like an, actual, f- an actual copy of Blades <laughs> in the Dark. Please. I don't want to play role-playing games online. That's fair. I get it. God, I love. It's just like this. Most of the experience gone, but also no one, no one wants to ever play anything different. Like everyone's like, I, I want to play something, and then you're like, okay, well, let's play not D and D five E, and they're like, no. I think that's because people are lazy. I think that's a laziness I mean, yeah, thing. But it's also like it's you. You're allowed to, I think, be lazy about what you do for entertainment purposes. Oh, I agree. It's a hobby. Yeah, you. Sh- if you have your one stick for a hobby, and that's the thing you are comfortable with and enjoy doing, great. I just, yeah, and honestly, it, the system isn't, like, I feel like for a lot of people, they'd rather just, like, be there to have a character and, like, interact with people than actually worry about the system. And because 5 is so accessible, they don't have to worry about the system. They can just be like, let's just talk to people. 
Yeah, I think it's fair. I think that's one of the nicer things about 5e. Blades in the Dark is really cool, though. Blades in the Dark is so cool. It it just, it adds that much more of a nightmare to try and get players. Have you ever played uh, Dishonor, Jackson? No. Blades in the Dark is heavily, maybe intentionally, I think think intentionally based on Dishonored, the series. And Dishonored is actually my favorite video game. Full stop. Ghosts, and ghosts are just hanging out in the city. And that is cool. And there's lightning wall. There is lightning walls. Yeah, that is that is lightning walls are straight up pulled from uh, pulled from Dishonored. I, okay, so then in Dishonored, how does that work? Because it, in Blades in the Dark, there's not really a like in the actual like guide. There's not like a good description of why it, outside of to keep out ghosts. It but runs then how on do a, they bring in? How does the like economy or how do people eat? Basically, let me where, tell you all about Dishonored. Because I where food come from? I love the world of dishonored so dishonored uh the game takes place in a kind of a fucking crumbling city the whole city is falling apart at the seams in blades of the dark i think is its best when you are playing in a city that has some major problems like if your city is running well you shouldn't need to be a blade in the dark as it were i think it would be fun to do like a blades in the dark campaign like in an actual like if ever let's say everyone lived in like philly for example in, you could just, just do a straight blades up actual philadelphia like, philly. yeah just yeah, actual modern day philadelphia don't worry about it Oops. There are ga- there are systems like that too. There are plenty of systems that are like that. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm just like saying like the Blades in the Dark though. Like as like you just become an organized crime syndicate in Philly. Oh God, I love it so much. Um, so in in um, Dishonored, the way it works is it's a whale. It, it runs the whole like electricity system in that world runs on whale oil, um, which is like not literally. It is literally got, gathered from whales, but it's like this electric. Um, it's 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 magitech. It's the magitech of that setting. It's how everything power is powered or whatever. Um, and so for them, it's literally you can just turn the lightning wall all and off by cutting the power on it. I don't know. I don't remember okay. the exact details on it in Blades in the Dark. I t- they don't really talk about it. <laughs> Amazing. They kind like like the the thing is they're like the ghosts like come out of people when they die and like they have like the ghost cleanup squad mm-hmm. and they don't really give you a ton of information on them either. Like they they tell you about them but they don't give you like the actual details i think it's probably just for you to come up with on your own but like it there's just a lot of unanswered questions which is also you know to be fair as like a crime syndicate in the city you're probably not worried too much about like all right how do we stop ghosts from happening so hear me out you play uh, blades in the dark game where you are just straight up the ghostbusters you are a crime syndicate yes but your primary like cover is yeah we bust ghosts don't worry about it uh, there is a Ghostbusters faction though, and they are like basically the military police, and they're very scary. Amazing. Not not like as a you you play them though. They're like a they're right. a, a uh, government organization. I like the ideas of uh, having the Gus Ghostbusters. What the hell am I saying? Ghostbusters be like a group that you can play. Oh yeah, because in you, it, you it, it, I, I was, I was just looking at the Blades of the Dark stuff. Yeah, in Blades of the Dark, it's Leviathan Blood that run, that like powers everything. So they did just pull that straight from Dishonored. Hmm. Yeah. I love Blades in the Dark. Did you is- say Leviathan blood? Mm-hmm. I did. Is that how Dishonored it. works? Is that what Whale they oil. tell you about in number two? Whale oil. Oh, never mind. Whale oil, Leviathan blood. I just, I, I thought, literally I just said this two minutes ago. was where the magic came from. Oh, no, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother ball game. I don't remember, Blades in the Dark is magic light, right? It doesn't have, I like. I don't, I mean, I think the ghosts are about as magic, like, you can be, like, a ghost whisperer. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And I think that's about as magic as it gets. God. Jackson, hear me out. So here's what, here's no. what I'm gonna do. When I when I inevitably am drag kicking and screaming back to Eerie for something, we'll get together. We'll get a, we'll get a gang together for just like a like an eight hour Blades in the Dark one, one last, shot. Uh, one last heist. One last job. Hashtag one last job. I actually don't know how long the campaigns in Blades in the Dark usually go. They're intended to be, if I remember correctly, they're intended to be like pretty long. Like you're they're, you're intended to be able to do either or because you have like your single mission and then you have your downtime in between. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool though. But it, like I so said, cool. it is really hard to find people to play things that aren't D anD. I would agree. If you if if your restriction is finding people in person, yeah, I one hundred percent agree. Also, I, my restriction is finding people I want to play with. That's like, I'm also fair. very selective, admittedly. Fair. Um, like I'm not going to go on like a website and just be like, oh, find players, because then I know I'm yeah. just kind of a bad time. Yeah, I would. I actually, I've been thinking about trying to do that at some point. Um, maybe once one of the like many games that I bet actually finishes up, I might, I might do that just to like. Just to find a new GM, not because like my GMs are bad, just because like I want to find somebody who is willing to run a weird game that's not 5e or Shadowrun. Although honestly, I'd play Shadowrun at this point. I don't give a fuck. Shadowrun's pretty cool. Um, Shadowrun can be pretty cool. Apparently, the new Shadowrun is bad though. 
I've heard that New Shadowrun is easier. In the same way that people were really mad about how 5e was bad compared to 3.5, New Shadowrun is kind of a similar thing from what I understand. Okay. So I probably just have, have, heard, have only heard from the Shadowrun fanboys. Um, there are problems, but there are... The Shadowrun is a janky system from the ground up. Like, it's always had issues. Isn't from, there a new Cyberpunk system coming out, too? The new, Yeah, the new... for uh, To go along with uh, 2077, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Um, Shadowrun, fun. Shadowrun's big problem is it, it never knows what to do with... Um, I think it's the Deckers are the ones that have, like, the, the fucking hacker voice. Because mm-hmm. um, for the longest... In, like... <laughs> pre i think four or something they literally just had an entirely separate like system like you you would stop combat in like the real world and like the air quotes real world right and you'd be like well we're now gonna go into De- the decker ver- the decker world or whatever and let them hack their way through their shit which is its own combat its own like entire system just contained within and then eventually they were like well what if we just let the deckers drive drones around and don't worry about it or what? And then they were like, "Well, what if we just said that everyone could come help the Deckers out in the Deckerverse or whatever?" It was weird. It's it. Hmm. They they just don't know how to do it. And for a game that is entirely based around shadowy organizations in Cyberpunk land, you would think that they would figure out a good hacking system, and they just haven't. Yeah, no. That's... Yeah, I mean, it's probably it's kind of hard to do like a hacking that is combat based hacking. <laughs> exactly. Like out of combat hacking would be much easier. Exactly. Just give the hacker a gun. Well, that's yeah. what they did. Eventually, they just gave him drones. Like you just drive drones around as your class. I mean, you can ha- you should be able to hack out of combat, but like, what are you gonna hack in combat? I'm gonna turn Turrets, the mechanical eye off. Doors. No, I think Jackson has a point. Turn that mechanical eye off. I'm gonna. There's a man. He had a mechanical arm. I'm pretty sure you can actually wife. do that. That'd be fun. But how? Because I thought everything was like, what is it? Intranet. Yeah, but like the deckers are just like so it's... wander around on the internet. Like that's their whole thing. I think it's yeah, the deckers. Would your mechanical eye be connected to the internet? Yeah, it would have to be. Intranet. Would it have to be? Uh huh. Could it just be like a prosthetic how are you gonna have your sick in-game heads-up display that everyone canonically has then i suppose that would have to be connected to the internet i was just talking about like a like a zoom eye i'm pretty sure it one of the things they established early in shadowrun is that no don't worry about it everyone is always like has a headset or something that they're connected to each other on amazing don't and worry also about awful. It. we just got that mm-hmm. yeah shadowrun seems pretty cool um not not necessarily my aesthetic though you know that's fair i'm a huge fan of the shadowrun aesthetic but not a huge fan of the shadowrun gameplay i think it's fun but it's not I think there are just problems. I think with the right GM, it can be great. And with a bad GM, like anything else, it, it'll fall apart. I just don't really. I'm not really a big combat fan in RPGs. We should. Have you have I pitched you on a game called Reflections, Jackson? No, it's a but I mean, it's a game that literally only has one dice roll in the entire. It's a one. It's like a one shot intended game, but it only has one dice roll in the entire thing. It'd be fun. It's the final I mean, Blades of the Dark is nice because it's all like a lot of it's just like um, it's a stat, like stat check kind of rolls. I it's a fate system, isn't it? Yeah, it's all it's all D six, um, and there's like flashbacks. It's it's pretty it's pretty neat. So like ev- everything you basically like the story is laid out, and then you react to the story saying like things in past tense. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the game, the like, kids playing like on the playground. They're like, actually, no, that didn't work because earlier today I did this. And you're like, man, mm-hmm. I hate that. That's kind of how Blades in the Dark is like intended to run. So like actually, that guard lets us in because uh, I bribed him, and then you like make a check to see if that's actually like, the what fucking happened. and the progress clocks are really fucking cool. I love that. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, and the, uh, what is the, what's the system? The stress mm-hmm. where you can basically just like have a heart attack. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, context note, the project <laughs> clocks are like constantly ticking timers that happen over like essentially GM discretion, but also under certain player conditions where it's like you have, you know, you have X amount of time before the guard comes back, but you also have X amount of time before the whole mission is a bust. And you also might have X amount of time before the system comes back online that you shut off. And those are all going to be th- like three separate actual ticking clocks wow that, like, i love it. i mean even when i play dnd oftentimes i will literally just like put a timer on yeah. like i'll like put my phone timer on and put it in the middle of the table and just not say anything mm-hmm. like if something's happening that requires action that has already been revealed to the players i'll just like put a timer down and be like okay make up your minds like, I, I like there, was a, um, there was a, a child basically drowning and i was like explain the whole situation you know like made sure everything was clear put a timer down and they just like literally sat there and watched it tick down to zero and they were like what and then they finally like got the body out of the lake, and I was like, "Okay, well, they're dead." And they're super dead. And they were like, well, "Why was she dead?" And I was like, you, <laughs> if I told you there's a child drowning in the lake, I was like, well, "What are you guys gonna do?" And I put a timer down. Mm-hmm. And then they didn't do anything. Like, the child died because you didn't get them out of the lake. I think the and they drowned. I think the nice, the hard thing with that for D and D is that obviously, like making a snap decision D and D is a little harder because you can't be like, like you can only get your words out so fast and you can only roll the dice so quickly, kind of thing. 
but mm-hmm. I think that that's a really effective effective way to do it in not combat situations. Yeah, yeah obviously, I mean, yeah, it was basically yeah. where it's like you just had to say, "I want to try and save the kid." Exactly, exactly. But, but it, they didn't. They were like casting like minor illusion on like the guy who like threw the child in the water trying to like convince him that he hadn't thrown the child in the water and it was like they just spent a lot of time doing really weird nonsensical things yeah it's a little weird mm-hmm. instead of trying to save child yeah yeah can't win them all mm. uh, I suppose yeah. not. and i think i think that there is there's a there's a huge amount of fun in the tension that comes from having a physical like representation of time going cut of you running out of time because mm-hmm. like in the moment obviously in real life like you know what your time like you you can t- feel the tension but having a physical representation of it in the game is is phenomenal and, and works really well but it's yeah, super so- windy out today i don't know if you guys can hear that or not but like you can hear like the house like shaking with the wind picking up i, I cannot that hear up. that very blustery day oh what's wrong with that why, why, are, you why are you so sad because <laughs> when you say blustery day i think of winnie the pooh oh why is that sad though i don't know it was more of like it wasn't a, a sad. All. It was a. It was a. Reminiscing. Also, congratulations! Now our podcast is banned in China. <laughs> You're right. We did mention <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. I feel like we probably were banned for other reasons already, though, right? What? I, I don't know. Jackson's what? pretty no hard way. into that communism. He might have been okay. And the Oscar goes to Jackson. Jackson's real deep in in that. Uh, China, China's not really communist, though. It's not. I know. I was trying to make a joke. It's it's a one party republic that is uses the communist face in order to further benefit their own goals it's it's a sham same you hate to see it though you do hate to see it you're like no no no. we're not we're not the chinese nationalist party we're the chinese communist party because the chinese nationalist party is actually not china we they never were and you know that's a whole debate about countries that are recognized and not recognized and it's a whole debacle any countries you guys don't recognize uh most of them yeah Wow. Oh. I've only been to a few, so all the rest of them, I don't recognize them. Wow. Hot takes by Noah. Um, Latvia. Noah, do you recognize Latvia? Never been there. Wow. Latvia? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thoughts on Estonia while well, I'm in that area? <laughs> Mark that up on another list of never been. Wow, I can't believe Noah. But you do you recognize them or no? Oh, I, I know they exist, but I can't say I'd recognize them. But so you you do confirm that Estonia is its own sovereign state? Is this a wait a minute? Wait a minute? Wait a minute? Are you trying to get me? When to, you say countries countries that are not recognized, there are certain nations within the UN and just in the world that will say we don't recognize this country, and it's the way oh, I'm saying like they don't. Well, yeah, it's not real. Well, that's why I was wondering: Are you trying to get me to agree to some sort of like controversial take by just playing on the fact that I actually don't know a lot about Estonia and Latvia? Um, I mean, I feel like. It's a hot take if you say you don't recognize, like, the sovereignty of any individual country. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Um, I just, I guess I just thought of Latvia, and then Estonia is right next to Latvia, so I was like, uh, you know what? All right. I was, for a hot second, I'm like, oh, wait, are these countries that are, like, currently in the middle of a, well, maybe not currently, but that, uh... Yeah, there's always some tensions going on between oh, yeah. nationalities uh, in, in that particular coast. Mm-hmm. Lithuania, yeah, Latvia, right. Estonia, there's always some, a little bit of, a little bit of sauce going on. You guys ever buy anything on Craigslist? Um, I think I have actually, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, I almost bought a motorcycle on Craigslist. Ah. Why? What do you mean? I why? bought a car on Craigslist. Nice. How'd that treat you? Uh, it's actually really, really well. Nice. Is that the one that you're driving now, or not that one? No, no, that's uh, the one I I got when I first moved to Texas. Uh, okay. I for like twelve hundred bucks, and it lasted me for a little bit over three years. So. Good deal. Yeah, not a bad deal at all. Oh, I all yeah, no, shoot. I also bought a car on Craigslist. That is the thing I bought. Yeah, I go. almost bought a motorcycle and I did buy a car. Yeah. Dan, you ever buy anything on Craigslist? I feel like I have, but I could not tell you for the life of me what. I got my cat from, my first cat from Craigslist. Does that count? There you go. Your first what? Cat. Oh. <gasps> I, speaking nice. of speaking of animals, Michelle and I have started looking at getting us getting us a little doggo. Nice. Yeah, very excited. You can just have one of my cats if you want. I mean, I would love that. I think Michelle might kill me. Even Giblin? She's looking over at me, over my shoulder. I can see her. Everyone um, loves Giblin. And, yeah, no, I, I don't think I'm allowed to go steal one of Jackson's cats. Even if he gives it to me. She's nodding her head. Yeah, I'm not allowed. Oh, is Michelle a cat hater? Michelle does not hate cats. No. Okay. But she doesn't just like doesn't them. Want a cat. She's never had a cat, so she doesn't get it. Mm. She just sees them as meaner dogs. Ah, oh, it's so, it's so uh, sad of a take. Yeah, right? 
It, uh, I'm not not an, un, not an uncommon take, though. No, no, absolutely not uncommon. Like, I get mm. where, where that comes from. But also, hear me out. I need me a cat um, in my life. See, someone who I cannot mention, no one knows them, though, uh, has the very spicy take that cats cannot love. Um, because, and he can, he believes you can prove that cats cannot love because they do not listen to your every command. And this isn't flat mine, earth, is it? Is this him? No, no, no. It's, it's someone I would, I would, I would mention if it was flat earth. Okay. Um, fair enough. Yeah. You can, you can just DM me later. It's, uh, um, yeah, the, the take is that things that don't like the like animals need to obey you in order to show you that they care. I mean, if your whole take is that cats can't love, I feel like that's more of a comment on maybe cat, maybe the cats you're around just don't love you. Oh well, yeah, but then like also that just what kind like of your interpretation of an animal caring is you're is basically saying blindly obeying you. Yeah, well not even that, but like you're just basically you're you're refining the category down to being like only animals that can lo- animals that love you do this, and then the things that they do are exclusively things that dogs do, and you're like, hmm, only dogs can love you. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like you're just refining your search down to the point where nothing else fits into the category, and then all of a sudden you're saying, "I have figured it out. I've solved the puzzle." <laughs> if your mm-hmm. searches are real time and strategy, you're only going to get real time strategy games. Precisely. Yeah. If you're saying a good game is something that takes place in real time and involves strategy, then you're going to be saying, you know, that <laughs> you're like, "Well, XCOM's a terrible game." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, well, why is it a terrible game? Well, it's not real time. It doesn't involve strategy, so it can't be a good game. Speaking of XCOM, new uh, new XCOM game came out this week. Yeah, I saw that. Isn't it a full? Is it a full game? It, isn't it like okay? 10 bucks? I think it is a full it, game, isn't it? It is a full game. Asterisk. It. So you know how Far Cry right has a thing where they do their like side Far Cry games every couple of years. Like after yeah, a major like, release, they do a side a side release, which is technically a full game and has done story and stuff, but it it just isn't quite the same as a full like numbered title. Like what was it, Blood Dragon or whatever? Blood Dragon, uh, New Dawn, I think is the new one. Um, yeah, I the, thought those were like DLC, but they're not. Yeah. They're, they are full games. Um, Do I, they take place in the world of the previous game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they're in the same, usually in the same location. Okay. Um, so like f- New Dawn takes place right after, like I think ten years after the events of Far Cry Five, but in the same like valley that Far Cry Five takes place in. I don't want to spoil God. it because stuff happens in Far Cry Five. Um, XCOM Chimera Squad. It XCOM Chimera Squad takes place. I, I've been playing it because I, I do own it. Uh, it takes place, I think, ten years, five years after the the events of XCOM Two, in which it's not a spoiler. That game is old. You do you do win. You do drive the aliens off planet for good. Um, except now there are all these aliens like chilling around on the planet, and like, what the fuck are you gonna do? You can't send them back to where they came from. They're just civilians now. Um, you play as the aliens? You do. You can play it. The, the reason it's called Chimera Squad is because it's not just humans. It's like a shitload. Of, it's like at, at least one of every alien race. And also a bunch of wow. humans. No, which is great. You can be a snakeman. You can be a snakeman. Here's my problem is that the game, while it feels like an XCOM game, it feels almost like a fan made add on. Mm. Oh, it feels like a mod almost. Here, let me send you a screenshot. Uh, I'll put it in the in the chat. Uh, where is this? Because I sent it the other day. No, this is how pop all up the screen communi- right now. This is how all communication is done, like all the storytelling and stuff in the game is done via this, which just feels like I'm reading a, vir- a visual novel that some yeah, it's not good. That's which bad. is really not good. It's not good. You is do- the character customization the same as it is in like XCOM Two, where you uh, can just make your people whatever? Yeah, I mean, to an extent, I haven't messed with the character customization much because I never did that in XCOM. If I'm being honest, <laughs> oh, you're missing out. You got to name the characters after your friends and, and just watch them, them die, look, like characters of your friends. <laughs> I have really want to do. Blast, I really want to do an that. XCOM game based where you create all the characters based on the people you know. It would have to be modded. Uh, make, make all the characters based on the people you know. Stream the entire thing and essentially write up little like storyline write ups after every couple sessions or every session to be like. Uh, what you got to do is uh, make it for you know people that you know and people that are in the stream, and then when they die, you just ban them. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, you're dead. You are no longer allowed to watch the stream. I'm sorry, Noah, but you have died. So, uh, mods, can you please ban at Bubba to Bad B U B B A B A D? I would yeah, do no. it. I would. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be very fun. Actually, I would love to do a stream XCOM game and just pull people from the chat. I love XCOM so much. I'm just not very and good at it. And then ban them when they die. You, have, Listen, you can't. You, can... you can't bitch out on this, Dan. You need to ban your audience. Here's the asterisk. I will bang the audience, and then un- once the game is completely done, once we have finished and oh, moved yeah, on to the sure. game, then we can unban everybody. 
Yeah, absolutely. Oh, then yeah, I'm in. Hack of voice, I'm in. Put me in. Well, that was surprisingly I just want to do, I want to do that with like more permadeath games. I'm, I dude, do like I, perma kill your audience. You have like two I people like watching your game. Your audience. What happens if when when they get like super injured? Do you do you, do you uh, mute them in the in the in the in no, the stream? You keep, you keep them in there until they're dead. You know? okay. okay. Yeah, they're not they're not dead, Dan. And if someone really pops off, you give them like VIP or mod them. <laughs> well, VIP. I feel like giving them mod is a bad idea. How do you make people VIPs? No, you can answer me that later. I I'm never mind. Sure I don't know why VIP I just asked that now. Name. And you, I think you only really have a limited should... number of them. Yeah, you only have a limited number. But yeah, you should uh, just mod people who pop off, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then just you should unmod and ban them if they die afterwards. <laughs> I'm looking at other games on my Steam that have like permadeath mechanics, and there's really not that many. I could do like FTL, but those runs are too short to really like justify it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could be fun still though. I. Dude, I love FTL Actually, so that much. That would be even more fun if you did it with FTL. That's because that's so like, quick. You, you could, yeah, you could ban them and then unban them within like an hour. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Darkest Dungeon, I think you could do that really well with. Yeah, but Darkest Dungeon, like a full like, campaign Darkest forever. Dungeon can be like a, can be a long experience. So you don't want to keep someone like out yeah. of your chat forever. Oh, there's a new DLC for Darkest Dungeon. It literally just dropped like two, yesterday, four days, days ago. ago. Four days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a. It's got PvP battles, which is kind of neato. That is cool. Cool idea. I'm literally just looking at my my thing to see what other games I have that you can I'm do. I'm trying to see like permadeath stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. XCOM is a big one. There is Massive Chalice, which technically has permadeath, but why would you bother? Um, those are really the only good ones that I have. Like that, I'm looking at my list. Yeah, I'm not seeing many others. There honestly. aren't very many games that have you that let you like care about your characters and then kill them. Customized characters. You could do like a Pokemon Nuzlocke. Cool. True. You could. You could. Because, like, you know, yeah, and just, like, name the Pokemon after your characters and, or your viewers and just, and kill, just them and kill them and ban them. Just keep killing That'd them. That'd be really funny, actually. I, I think it I'm would... I'm looking at what I other like permadeath games are. FTL is what it would work the best with. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Just because FTL runs are so fast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the FTL characters you can't customize them like you can the XCOM characters, you know? I mm -hmm. wonder if you could find like a mod the, to do the that, The XCOM though. ones would hurt, hurt the worst. No, there's no way that you could get a mod to customize your FTL characters, Dan. That They're, they're small. They're, like, pixel people. <laughs> I don't mean to... Really? Because there's a your... ship customizer mod. That's a oh, ship. Ships are way bigger than the, the ship. pilots. The, <laughs> yeah, see. the pilots are very, very small. That's the problem. They don't even have faces. Is there a workshop page even for FTL on Steam? I think Let's there is. See. I don't see one. No, I found one that just lets you change your default skins. Yeah, because FTL doesn't let you. It lets you customize your ship, but not let you customize because of the way the uh, sprite sheets work. It just mm -hmm. pulls from sprites. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. There's no difference in any of them. Yep. You oh, can play, you can play Oregon, like the you can light green, like dark Oregon Trail too, if you wanted to. That would work. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, Oregon Trail is like a name. Yeah, there, there's there's some good permadeath games out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I think XCOM is the one that would feel that they like, hurt the most though, because mm -hmm. the campaign Agreed. is like just long enough that like you'll be banned for a, like a week or two mm -hmm. if you're like streaming consistently, and then. Also, you can customize a character to look like them. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could find a way to like let you import characters because I feel like then what you could do is you could set your chat to like create their own custom characters yeah. for themselves and then, and then, then import send them. Send you the import. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hold on. XCOM to import characters. What do we got? Yeah, you can That'd import characters fun. from custom, from other servers. Copy the provided bin files. The importable character pool folder. The same place character. Blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah, you can import and export custom pools for XCOM. Yeah, we can all that make dude. custom characters to die. I'm I'm literally writing this down. This is a great idea. That would be so fun. Let's see. Hold on. Is there an XCOM character creator online? Might be. XCOM character creator. What do we got? XCOMBarracks.com. Yeah, there we go. Oh, upload, contribute, featured characters. Hell yeah, dude. This is a great idea. This is so much fun. And the fact that people can customize their characters themselves, even without owning the game, that's great. Well, I'm trying to confirm that they can. I'm, I'm logging into their site right now. Oh, okay, okay. One second. Got to be safe. Huh. Use that two-factor authentication. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because oh, yeah. if you have to own the game, it's a little bit harder. I mean, a lot of people probably have A lot of people too. have to have them, yeah. I'm, well, and it, it, especially if you can do... Last up, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? I just come to only 15 bucks. Upload, image, character file. Yeah, no, you have to be able to create... You have to be able to have the thing... But there are a bunch of th this site also lets you actually have like the mod links like you can have them. Actually, I might. I don't have XCOM 2 on Steam, but I might just buy it because it's I, so disc. It's, honestly, it's 15 bucks. If I mean, you I get the first it, it's, one. it's worth it to get the DLC, the DLC for XCOM 2 make and break that game. Like, I think the base game is fun, but getting with but having all the DLC, it's really worth it, especially for War of the Chosen, uh, Shen's Last Gift, 
and um, Alien Hunters. Although I will, or sorry, not Alien Hunters. Uh, the is it the reinforcement pack is that the other one? Uh, no. Sure. It, yeah, Shen's last last gift is really good, and then War of the Chosen. Those are the two that I was thinking of because of that actual like class stuff. Whereas the Resistance Warrior pack, the yeah, Res- Resistance Warrior pack, reinforcement pack, XCOM two, War of the Chosen, and uh, War of the Chosen La- tactical legacy pack. You yeah. can get all of them. The for reinforcement pack is uh, Anarchy's bucks. Children and Alien Hunters, which is just like character customization essentially uh oh no alien okay. hunters also does have a new type of mission added so that's nice but yeah you could 100 percent just tick these off and upload it and then have the have the streamer download that would be so much fun hell even ha- even like have like have one of your mod team or have somebody like in the chat like helping people who don't own the game create their own characters like essentially doing a side stream just for character creation god this is yeah. a that'd be really fun You'd have to. It would be a, a lot of hard work. Like you'd actually have to put some serious time into like the prep work and like setting everything up, making sure you had the mods in the way that you wanted them, that it would actually be worth it to play. Because um, some of the some of XCOM stuff is stupid. Some of XCOM stuff is less stupid. I have I have problems with XCOM. I have problems with XCOM because I feel like they are a little bit too punishing at times. That's actually the nice thing I think about the new one is that it's a lot less punishing. It feels like like if you are caught out of position, you aren't immediately super fucked. Oh yeah, is permadeath like? turn mm. offable or is that like a mandatory uh i think in XCOM you can turn off permadeath let me check can you i mean you shouldn't but you can uh, that's... yeah no you definitely should just live with the consequences of your actions i had one time i was doing a really like actually solid XCOM one run i had a bunch of my favorite people and then i lost two of my like actual best soldiers and then then the game becomes infinitely and, harder all of a sudden. Oh my gosh, it was heartbreaking. I had actually like formed an attachment with those guys almost. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. not only were they gone, I didn't have anyone to replace them. And my last save was way too far back for me to rescue mm-hmm. them. See, one thing I like is about like the, the, the death in XCOM as compared to like... Uh, so actually, this happened to me in Fire Emblem even like not not so much recently because i've gotten better about it but in like the older games where you would because in three houses you really only ever, ever have like a maximum of like 13 units like it's super mm-hmm. super small compared to the older games because i in even up to like awakening of fates you could have b- battles with like 30 units it was a ridiculous the amount that's of way too have. many that's way too many yeah, like you, you'd yeah. be having like 25 units in some battles in uh fates that's and so many like yeah it's a ton um and the thing about that is when you have permadeath and you have like 30 units, sometimes you're just like rushing through like turns and you're just like playing and you're really like you're over leveled. So it doesn't really matter. And then like six battles later, you're like, wait, when did I lose like so and so? When did they die? Kind of on a similar note, one of the things I one of the mods that I remember for XCOM that I really loved was just increasing. It's, I think it's only by two or like by one or something. It increases the number of units you can bring in because having uh-huh. like even at higher difficulties, having literally just one or two extra units to bring in is it means that you have so much more strategy available to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a huge. I love XCOM. I wish that the other XCOM games outside of the you know Enemy Unknown and Enemy Within and XCOM Two were actually good. Because the what the old one, the fucking the one that you're like 1970s something or another, yeah. it's just it's just not as good. Ooh, one thing that fucking uh, the new one does really really cool is it introduces a breach mechanic. Where like okay. you can kind of set up like Breaching. oh I I have you know that's exactly what it is so each battle is a little bit separated so it's not like one massive like map anymore but because you are actually on the attack rather than just defending like or like or like being instead of just being a strike team you are like going into a relatively contained situation where you have mm-hmm. the intel you need and so you can like set up breaches at like oh I have my snake boy going up through the vents and I have my like tank bursting through the front door while i have two people going in through the side from a breaching charge it's a very cool mechanic i actually think that genuinely i think that in the way it i think that they are doing that because i suspect the next xcom game will be a take it to their home world kind of setup Mm -hmm. um and i think that they are kind of trying out new mechanics for that purpose is my my kind of my hope it's also my guess but it's also my hope I feel like there's no way that they couldn't do that, right? If they already kicked him off Earth, then like they need to they need to one up it somehow. Exactly, exactly. Like I don't know how you would be able to play it without without that. God, I, I'm like watching XCOM. Uh, I need to stop. I need to, we need to we need to finish this episode out. But I'm watching a bunch of XCOM like gameplay stuff, and God, it's so it's so good. XCOM Two is such a fucking good game. The new enemies I, in that I, game. I, are I am really tempted to buy it, but it's also like I I've put I've played so much Fire Emblem recently. I don't want to just like turn based 
game myself into oblivion i mm-hmm. i would always recommend because it's on a franchise sale i would actually say it's probably worth it to grab it and then uh like Even if i don't play it and then play it later too. yeah exactly XCOM 2 and then probably like war of the chosen what, what does the reinforcements pack do reinforcement pack mostly adds character customization except shen's last gift is an entirely like new mission setup um it's like a whole new mission type and adds a bunch of new enemies uh reinforcement like uh, one of them add alien hunters i think adds one new enemy type but anarchy's children is literally just do you want to look do you want your people to look like they're from mad max because this is how you make them look like they're from mad max oh lame um but the other two are pretty good the other two are pretty solid war of the chosen i know is like a big thing right it's like, a is huge. It's, it's the chosen is like essentially the uh enemy within to enemy unknown okay so it's like it's not that required technically, but it literally you j- just get it. Yeah. It's like playing Civ without the DLC. Like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's this is probably as good a spot as any to uh, call it a call it a call it a day and start doing our little little thingies. Doing our little thingies on wow. the air. Yeah. Right. Off the air. <sighs> Off the air. Why do, you, why do you say things sometimes, Dan? How dare you? Listen. Listen. Good eats. <laughs> I love good eats so much. Sorry. Not gonna apologize for who I am. I'm just in a theme song mood. I sang the goodies theme song. I don't know if you guys heard, but I was kind of like whispering the X Men theme song earlier. I heard you whispering a theme song, and I wasn't sure what it was because I, I don't, didn't recognize. I think you guys it. were like talking about something, and I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's a, the the old X Men cartoon theme song. Yeah, well, yeah. it's one of those little things. Like sometimes I like to mute my mic and say things for nobody to hear them. <laughs> Every now and then I hear those, and I'm like, wow, how did I miss that? How did I not remember him <laughs> saying that? Well, that's fine. And I leave it in because I'm like, I didn't realize. And now I know you're just doing that to mess with me. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I'll just like, I just did one right there too. Um, But yeah, I'll just move my mic and say something. And then works like a charm. Wow. All right. So uh, you can find me on TikTok. Noah? Well, you can uh, find me as Bubba the Bad, B-U-B-B-A-D-A-B-A-D, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. I said Twitch twice. I meant Tumblr. Is that well, last one? Well, you're there one. a lot. I am there a lot. I'm there three times a week. 6 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Once, you're here uh, first, folks. Once I'm back at work, I'll be moving back to 7 p.m. on the weekdays. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You're not even worried about it. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. That's about all I'm up to. So. Is that really all you're up to, Noah? That, that's it. Well, I mean, I got engaged, but that's not that important. So, Dan, where oh, can okay. we find you? Uh, you can find me at uh, twitter.com hey, slash seven, twitch.tv slash born to rule, and Instagram at, bor- at born to rule 57. There we go. Did what you say you, twitch born to rule 57? No, I did not. Not this okay. time. Good. I thought I, I thought I heard you say that, and I'm like, mmm, incorrect. Uh, Jackson already did his, even. He, said he's, on, he said he's on uh, TikTok. That's true. Uh, podcast. You can find us at facebook.com slash OTA podcast, twitter.com at the off the air and patreon.com slash off the air. If you support us monetarily, not only will you get a shout out, you will get access to bonus content. Um, This week we will have ideally before this episode comes out, we will have bonus episodes drop. It depends on how much time of my life gets taken up by um, what do you call taken up by D&D over the next two days. So who has who has D&D time? Who even does D&D anymore? I know, right? Absurd. We do. Um, but if you would like to support the podcast, but like not in a monetary fashion, I mean, outside <laughs> of uh, telling your friends about us, you can also leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Even if you don't listen on Apple Podcasts, it actually is very helpful for us if you give us a review on uh, on that. So, yeah, that's about yeah. it. Thanks for yeah. listening to us talk about nerd shit. If you want to, have we have we plugged the Discord in a while? No, we haven't. If you want to go to the Discord, it's in our. It should be still our pinned tweet, unless Noah changed it again. I never changed it. I never changed it. You changed it by accident once. Jackson changed <laughs> it by accident once. I have yeah, never changed, changed it. Pin tweet. That pinned tweet is over a year old now. It is over. No, no, shoot, it is. Yeah, man, we've been doing this a while. Oh, it's a June second, not January second. Hot damn.